probably seen lots of reactions where you mix a couple of things together and it makes some different stuff. And then it's done. The reaction is over. And you can tuck the product in the corner of the lab and forget about it until summer when you have to clean it up for next year. Okay, maybe you don't, and that's just me. But not all reactions happen like that. Some reactions are called reversible reactions. The first reaction I did was irreversible, where all of the reactants form products until it ran out of reactants. In reversible reactants, the reactants can form products and the products can form reactants. You could read the same reaction forward and backward. Here's water. Most of the time you don't think of water as part of a reversible reaction, but it is. It's just on a really small scale. Some of the water molecules will give away one of their hydrogen atoms to another water molecule. This creates a hydroxide and a hydronium. The equation for the reaction looks like this. But this isn't the whole story. The hydroxide and hydronium are attracted to each other by their charge and can react to create two water molecules. The equation for that reaction looks like this. Both of these reactions happen at the same time, all the time, in small percentages of the water molecules. So to simplify these two reactions, we write the equation with a double arrow to represent the reversibility. It's important to notice that not every molecule of water was turning into hydroxide and hydronium at the same time. In fact, water is mostly water as you know it most of the time. It's found in equilibrium, a balance that is unique to water. At any given time, a very small amount of water is reacting to form hydronium and hydroxide, but also at the same time, a very small amount of hydronium and hydroxide are reacting to form water. Overall, there is no net change in the amount of reactants or products. We say no net change because a reaction is still occurring in both directions, but the concentration of reactants and products will remain steady. Because the reaction is still occurring, the equilibrium is often called a dynamic equilibrium. Some reactions will create more products, and other reactions will create more reactants, but at equilibrium, the forward rate and the reverse rate are equal, so that there is still no net change in the amount of reactants and products. For example, if we look at a reaction of sulfur dioxide with oxygen in dynamic equilibrium with sulfur trioxide, we see that equilibrium is quickly reached. We know that it's reached when their concentrations remain constant. None of the chemicals have the same concentrations as each other, and that's okay. Equilibrium does not mean that the concentrations of the products and reactants are the same. It just means that the concentrations of products and reactants are no longer changing. Sometimes people mistakenly think that a catalyst will change the equilibrium of a reaction, but that's not true. All a catalyst does is speed up the time it takes to reach equilibrium. It does this by lowering the activation energy for the reaction to occur. Thanks for watching this episode of Teacher's Pet. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Twitter at SciencePet.